Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to solve one-step equations. I'll cover addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division equations. We'll start with addition. Now when we solve one-step equations, we want to isolate the variable, which means get it by itself. Basically, we want to undo whatever is being done to the variable. That way, the variable is by itself on one side of the equation. We do this by using the inverse or opposite operation. Keep in mind, it is very important that whatever is done to one side of the equation, it must be done to the other. That keeps everything balanced and equal. Let's jump into number one where we have x plus 16 equals 28. Now we need to isolate that variable of x. We need to figure out what x equals. Since 16 is being added to x, we need to undo that addition by using the inverse operation. So the opposite operation. The opposite of addition is subtraction. So let's subtract 16 from the left side of the equation. Now whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other in order to keep it balanced and equal. So let's subtract 16 from the right side as well. Now on the left side of the equation, we are adding 16 and subtracting 16. So these 16s are going to cancel out. They equal zero. So our x is isolated now. It's all by itself. x equals, and then on the right side of the equation, 28 minus 16 equals 12. So x equals 12. That's our solution. Now we can always check a solution by plugging it into the original equation. So let's plug 12 in for x and see if this works. So 12 plus 16 equals 28. 12 plus 16 does equal 28, so we have the correct solution. x equals 12. Let's move on to number two, where we have 57 equals m plus 20. We need to isolate that variable of m. 20 is being added to m, so we need to undo that addition using the inverse operation. The inverse of addition is subtraction, so let's subtract 20 from this side of the equation. Now whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other. So let's subtract 20 from this side as well. Now on the right side of the equation, we are adding 20 and subtracting 20. So these 20s cancel out. They equal zero. We are left with our isolated variable of m. So m equals, and then on the left side of the equation, 57 minus 20 equals 37. So m equals 37. And we can rewrite this with the variable coming first. m equals 37. Let's check that solution by plugging 37 in for m in the original equation. So 57 equals 37 plus 20. 37 plus 20 does equal 57, so we have the correct solution. M equals 37. So that's how we solve one-step addition equations. Let's move on to subtraction. So here are our examples of one-step subtraction equations. Let's jump into number one, where we have y minus 21 equals 43. Now we need to isolate that variable of y. We need to figure out what y equals. Since 21 is being subtracted from y, we need to undo that subtraction by using the inverse operation. So the opposite operation. The opposite of subtraction is addition. So let's add 21 to the left side of the equation. 
Now, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other in order to keep it balanced and equal. So we need to add 21 to the right side as well. Now let's take a look at the left side of the equation. We are subtracting 21 and adding 21. So these 21s cancel out, they equal zero. So our variable y is now isolated, it's by itself. So y equals, and then on the right side of the equation, 43 plus 21 equals 64. So y equals 64, that's our solution. Now we can always check a solution by plugging it into the original equation. So let's plug 64 in for y and see if this works. 64 minus 21 equals 43. 64 minus 21 does equal 43, so we have the correct solution. Y equals 64. Let's move on to number two, where we have 90 equals G minus 15. We need to isolate that variable of G. 15 is being subtracted from G, so we need to undo that subtraction by using the inverse operation. The inverse of subtraction is addition. So let's add 15 to the right side of the equation. Now whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other. So let's add 15 to this side as well. Now on the right side of the equation, we are subtracting 15 and adding 15. So these 15s cancel out, they equal zero. So G is now isolated, it's by itself. G equals, and then on the left side of the equation, 90 plus 15 equals 105. So G equals 105, and we can rewrite this with the variable coming first, and that is our solution. Now let's check that solution by plugging 105 in for G and seeing if this works. So 90 equals 105 minus 15. 105 minus 15 does equal 90, so our solution is correct. G equals 105. So that's how we solve one step subtraction equations Let's move on to multiplication. So here are our examples of one-step multiplication equations. Let's jump into number one where we have 8x equals 72. Now we have a number next to a variable. That means we are multiplying. So this is 8 times x equals 72. Anytime you see a number next to a variable, that is multiplication. So something to keep in mind. Now we need to isolate that variable of x. We need to figure out what x equals. Since x is being multiplied by eight, we need to undo that multiplication by using the inverse operation. So the opposite operation. The opposite of multiplication is division. So let's divide the left side of the equation by eight. Now whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other in order to keep it balanced and equal. So let's divide the right side by eight as well. Now as far as the left side of the equation, we are multiplying by eight and dividing by eight. So these eights cancel each other out. We have eight divided by eight, that gives us one. So we have one x, which is just x. Our variable of x is isolated, it's by itself. So we have x equals 72 divided by eight equals nine. x equals nine. That's our solution. Now we can always check a solution by plugging it into the original equation. So let's plug nine in for x and see if this works. We have eight times nine equals 72. 
8 times 9 does equal 72, so we have the correct solution. X equals 9. Now one thing I do want to mention about plugging that 9 back into the original equation, make sure to use something to represent multiplication. I used a dot. Putting the 9 right next to the 8, that would look like 89. Two numbers together does not represent multiplication. But when we have a number next to a variable, that does represent multiplication. So something to keep in mind. Let's move on to number 2, where we have 39 equals 13w. We need to isolate that variable of w. w is being multiplied by 13, so we need to undo that multiplication using the inverse operation. The inverse of multiplication is division, so let's divide this side by 13. Now whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So let's divide this side by 13 as well. Now on the right side, we are multiplying by 13 and dividing by 13. So these 13s cancel out. We have 13 divided by 13, which equals 1. So we have 1w, which is just w. Our variable is isolated. It's by itself. So we have w equals, and then on the left side, 39 divided by 13 is 3. So w equals 3. We can rewrite this with the variable coming first. So here is our solution. Let's check that solution by plugging 3 in for w in the original equation. So we have 39 equals 13 times 3. 13 times 3 does equal 39, so we have the correct solution. w equals 3. So there's how we solve one-step multiplication equations. Let's move on to division. So here are our examples of one-step division equations. Let's jump into number one, where we have x divided by 25 equals 6. Now we need to isolate that variable of x. We need to figure out what x equals. Since x is being divided by 25, we need to undo that division by using the inverse operation, so the opposite operation. The opposite of division is multiplication, so let's multiply the left side of the equation by 25. Now whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other in order to keep it balanced and equal. So let's multiply the right side by 25 as well. Now let's take a look at the left side of the equation. We are dividing by 25 and multiplying by 25. So these 25s cancel out. They equal 1. Let's come to the side and quickly take a look at how the 25s cancel out and equal 1. We are multiplying x divided by 25 by 25. So we have 25 times x divided by 25. I wrote 25 in fractional form since the division problem was in fractional form. That way we have numerators and denominators and we can multiply straight across. We are just multiplying fractions here. Remember, we can write any whole number in fractional form by putting it over 1. Let's multiply. We'll start with the numerators, so the top numbers. 25 times x, that equals 25x. Now we can multiply the denominators, so the bottom numbers. 1 times 25, that equals 25. So we have 25x over 25. These 25s cancel out. They equal 1. We have 25 divided by 25. That gives us that 1. So we have 1x which is just x. So the variable is now isolated. It's by itself. So we have x on the left side equals, and then on the right side, 6 times 25. That equals 150. x equals 150. That's our solution. Now we can always check a solution 
by plugging it into the original equation. So let's plug 150 in for x and see if this works. 150 divided by 25 equals 6. 150 divided by 25 does equal 6, so that's the correct solution. x equals 150. Let's move on to number 2 where we have 8 equals v divided by 8. Now we need to isolate that variable of v. v is being divided by 8, so we need to undo that division by using the inverse operation. The inverse of division is multiplication, so let's multiply the right side of the equation by 8. Now whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other. So we need to multiply the left side of the equation by 8 as well. Now let's take a look at the right side of the equation. We are dividing by 8 and multiplying by 8. So these 8s cancel out. They equal 1. That gives us 1v, which is just v. So the variable is now isolated. v equals, and then on the left side of the equation, 8 times 8, that equals 64. So v equals 64, and we can rewrite this with the variable coming first. Let's check that solution by plugging 64 in for v in the original equation. So we have 8 equals 64 divided by 8. 64 divided by 8 does equal 8, so that's the correct solution. V equals 64. So there you have it. There's how you solve one-step equations. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.